This video goes over a Freudian case study with a patient named Anna O, who was diagnosed with hysteria. Anna O was the pseudonym given to one of the patients of physician Joseph Brewer. Anna O's real name was Bertha Pappenheim, and she had initially sought Brewer's help with a series of symptoms that included visual disturbances, hallucinations, partial paralysis, and speech problems. Brewer, who worked alongside Freud for some cases, including Anna O's, diagnosed the young woman with hysteria and later discussed her case with Freud, who developed his own ideas of what lay at the root of Anna O's condition. While Freud never actually met Pappenheim, her story fascinated him and served as the basis for his book called Studies on Hysteria, which was published in 1895, co-written with Brewer. Brewer's description of her treatment led Freud to conclude that hysteria was rooted in childhood sexual abuse. Indeed, Freud himself once described Anna O oh as the true founder of the psychoanalytic approach to mental health treatment. Anna O, oh, from now on I'll just call her Bertha, came to Joseph Brewer for treatment from what was then called hysteria. While caring for her dying father, Bertha experienced a range of symptoms. More specifically, Bertha experienced paralysis in her right arm and leg. She had involuntary eye movements, including vision problems, and in December of 1881, she developed a squint. She also had hydrophobia, which was an aversion to food and to water which left Bertha unable to drink for days at a time. Bertha also experienced lethargy. Between December 11th, 1881 and 1st of April the following year, Bertha was bedbound. She also experienced language difficulties. Halfway through a sentence, Anna would repeat the last word and pause before completing it. She also began speaking in a variety of language, including English to her carers, who spoke German, and caused much confusion. However, Anna herself was apparently unaware of what she was doing, and she was eventually unable to speak for two weeks. Eventually, Berta was diagnosed with hysteria, and spent much of the daytime in a state of anxiety, experiencing hallucinations such as those of skeletons and black snakes, possibly resulting from seeing her own hair. During the day, she would wake up from naps in a state of discomfort, crying, tormenting, tormenting. After sunset, Bertha entered a state of deep hypnosis. Freud noted that if she was able to describe the hallucinations of the day in a trance-like state in the evening, she would be able to awake normally and spend the rest of the evening more at ease. During the course of Bertha's treatment, which lasted from 1880 to 1882, Brewer found that talking about her experiences seemed to offer Bertha some relief from her symptoms. She dubbed the treatment the talking cure. This talking cure, and Berta's case, was highly influential in the development of the free association technique, which is used in psychoanalytic therapy. Overall, Brewer spent hundreds of hours with Berta, getting her to talk through the problems at the root of her suffering. At first, she would only speak in fairy tales, making up stories about what she was thinking and feeling in what she called chimney sweeping. Gradually, he was able to hypnotize her to take her back to the moment that disturbed her most, encouraging her to talk about them. Just how much of her mental illness was real and how much of it was a way to keep the attention of the therapist has been up for debate. Freud, who had been a close friend as well as a colleague of Brewer, Freud even named his oldest daughter after Brewer's wife. Why exactly he would do that? I'm not quite sure. But Freud condemned him as being a bit foolish for absolutely missing the sexual component of her treatment. He argued that clearly part of her problem was her absolute infatuation with her therapist, which was Brewer. Freud was so unspoken about his belief that it led to a sudden and bitter end to the friendship between Freud and Brewer. Publicly, Freud used both this case as the basis for his work in psychoanalytic therapy. At the same time, however, he lambasted Brewer to his students and used the case of an example as what can happen when a therapist ignores what are clearly sexual fantasies. 
Freud claimed that Berta's heartbreak over her father's death was actually because of an Electra complex, incestuous sexual fantasies she had towards him. She transferred these fantasies to Brewer as the new authority figure in life. According to Freud, Brewer had told him of an episode late in her treatment where he had fled her home after finding his patient in the grip of hysterical and false childbirth. She had become convinced that she was pregnant with Brewer's child. Berta's horrified estate denied that any of it was ever true when her real identity was released after her death. While Brewer and Freud may have painted the picture that Brewer's treatment cured Anna O, or Berta, of her symptoms, records indicate that she became progressively worse and was eventually institutionalized. Berta eventually did recover from her illness. In 1954, Germany issued a postal stamp bearing her image in recognition of her many accomplishments. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, consider dropping a like and perhaps even subscribing. I've made a few other videos like this, so check them out. Thanks for watching and goodbye.